Hello and welcome. I'm Lachlan. Grab yourself a nice coffee because today we're going to be designing this. So this is a fun little iced coffee brand identity I did for a university assignment. So I made this can up in Blender um, and I've done all the logo and brand identity in Illustrator. So we're gonna run over some basic modeling. We're gonna do some UV unwrapping of the can so we can make our label for it. Um, we're gonna do some water simulation, some simple stuff, so don't freak out. Um, and then we're gonna do some final materials and get this puppy rendered out. So the basis of this was off this boss can, um, iced coffee can. I couldn't really find any mock-ups of this nice skinnier can. So that's sort of why I built it. And we're gonna use this as our reference. So speaking of reference, let's jump in to our fresh blend scene and chuck in our reference image. So we're gonna come over to our front view. Um, if you're wondering how I switch all the views, that little squiggly key. Yeah, that's the official name of it. Uh, so jump to your front view. We're gonna go shift A image as background and just locate wherever you saved your images. I'll have a link below to all of them. And then we're gonna to come to our top view, shift A image background and chuck in our can. This can, we've got two and you'll see why later, but this, this one with the rounded uh, middle bit. Perfect. So let's get on the can first. So we're gonna go shift A, add an A mesh and chuck in a cylinder. It's gonna be the base of our can. So we're gonna hit tab, tab to go into edit mode and just S to scale. Perfect, and let's do the top bit first. So it's still in edit mode. I'm gonna jump over to my edge select. So you can either press here or just press two on your keyboard. You can cycle between all of them. And we're gonna hold alt and we're gonna click to make sure we get that whole bit selected. So alt click and let's get modeling. So G, Z, bring it up on that Z axis and just bring it to that edge there. You can work in three, like the see-through x-ray mode. That's a bit easier as well. EZ, and then S to scale. So we're gonna bring it in. All we're doing is just following the shape of this can. So E and Z, bring it up. And then for this one, we're gonna hit E, and then we're gonna right click. And then the reason we've done that is we can still, it's still extruded. So we can press S to scale. I'm gonna bring it out. And then E again to bring it up. So it's gonna be a bit quicker of a faster paced tutorial. This one's not gonna be as in depth just cause we got a lot to cover. Um, there's some other amazing can tutorials out there that you can watch for a bit more, bit, better explanation than I'm, I'm gonna give. CG Essentials is a great one. Um, so now onto the bottom, it's gonna be exactly the same as the top. Alt click, GZ, bring it down. It's gonna follow this edge. Typically when I'm using reference images, you'll see like this one's not straight. So just pick an edge, just go with it. Um, so same as before, easy, ba, ba, ba. very repetitive stuff. Um, with this, sometimes as well, if it's a bit shaky, you can hold shift and it'll make your movements a lot more linear. So I'm gonna hold shift down there, easy. And the same as before, we're gonna go E, right click, S to scale, bring her out about there. E and bring it down to about there. So same with the whole reference image thing, because it's around like a cylindrical object. As you can see, it's to here. So don't bring this bit all the way down to here. Just bring it, just follow one of the edges. Um, and ta-da, tutorial done, you've got a can. Um, so far, we're nearly there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna right click on the can, shade it smooth. It looks atrocious, because um, we need to add some more geometry. So we're gonna come to our modifiers, properties here on the can still hit the modifier and add a sub div. So I'm gonna crank it up to two and it looks borderline even worse. So what we need to do to get these hard, like the harder edges back is just add some more geometry in. So to do that, we're gonna be using loop cuts. So loop cuts, you're gonna do it by pressing. So we're in edit mode on our can, control and R. And you'll see here, this pops up and just left click, and drag it up about there. Once you get it the sort of way you want it to be, you can double tap G with this whole thing selected. So I'll click double G and that will edge slide it along there. So about there. And we're probably gonna need one here, about there. And then one at this top bit to make it quite a hard edge at the top. That's looking good to me. Um, it's pretty much all this modeling. You're just adding loop cuts and extruding stuff. It's pretty simple when you do have a nice reference image. So for this one though, to get it, cause we want it to be symmetrical, the top and bottom, I guess like edges of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go control R, left click, but before we do anything else, we're gonna hit right click and that's gonna pop it in the center. And then what we can do is we can bevel it, essentially split it into two. 
So we can hit Control B, B for bevel, and just drag it up. I'm going to hold Shift as well to make my movements a bit more exact, and somewhere about there. We're looking good. Now, let's get this top little bit done. So with this one, on the top of this can that we're referencing off, it sort of like slopes in a little bit like this. Um, so to do that, how we're going to do this is in our edit mode, we're going to come to our face select or hit three on your keypad. Select this guy. I want to hit I to inset. So we'll bring that face in somewhere about there. Looks good. Beautiful. And then E. Well, if you can't see what you're doing because you have the sub div on, you can just turn it off for now. So just hide that little like TV looking button. I'm going to bring it up a little bit more about there. And then we're going to extrude it one more time down. And then with it selected, just going to hit S and scale it in. And that's going to give us that curvature in towards the cam. Chuck that subdiv back on. And you're going to see this ugly shading, like rippling issue. Like so we just need to add some more geometry. So I'm going to hit I to inset somewhere about there. Nice and sharp. Bob's your uncle. You might need to add a second one, um, especially if you're only doing like one subdiv, but that looks good to me. So do the same with the bottom bit. So I'm gonna rotate over here, come to this guy, into tab into edit mode, three for face select, select the bottom of this can. Now the bottom is a little bit different. Um, we're gonna hit I to inset. With this is it's actually, this one's then just straight down. So the top aren't mirrored. So this one just comes straight in. So it gets a little bit easier for us to model. So once you have that inserted in, you're gonna hit E, and I can't see what I'm doing. I'm gonna turn that guy off about there. And I'm gonna hit I to inset because I know I'm gonna need it. Turn that back on and we're looking pretty good. So here's a bit on this edge here. It's a bit bubbly, a bit rounded for my liking. So as before, just adding loop cuts. So control R, I'm gonna add one on this top edge and right click, pretty much only need that one there. I will add one on this inside. And for this one, I'm actually going to turn this back off. I want to do that left click, right click, and bevel it somewhere out there. And I just realized we didn't do this bit. Let's go, let's go this way now. So left click, right click, control B to bevel somewhere about there. Let's get working on here. So it's essentially exact same mirror as the top. I want to follow this edge. So just control R for your loop cuts, drag it down. Bah, bah, bah. We're going quick. We're going to get this can done nice and fast for you guys to use for your next project. Control R, add another one. So this is a bit more rounded at the bottom. Once again, you can come into here if you want. And then control R. I'm going to add one at this bottom bit to make that a nice tight, tight edge. And da da da, look at this. You got a can, guys. Bada bing, bada boom. So good point here. Save your file. Ice coffee version a thousand at this point. Um, it's my first tutorial, so I've had to make I had to make a few of these. Ice coffee break. Let's get on to now we've got our base of our can done. We're gonna get this pop bit done. So you could model this as a part of this mesh on this face and do it a bit bit more properly. <laughs> but I'm gonna cheat a little bit just to make it a bit easier for myself, and I'm just gonna model it separately. But in saying that, I will, however, still use this top bit. So I'm gonna separate this from the can so I can use this face, and then I know that this size face fits in the can later. So with this selected, in our face select mode, we're gonna hit P for like separate, and then by selection. And we now have two separate bits. So I'm gonna label these, can, and then this as the, the lid. It's not a lid, it's a top whatever, it's one of them, it's a lid top, whatever, and we're good to go. So for this, we can just click on our can and we're just gonna hide him. And then in here, it's always a bit fiddly with ever with reference images, especially when you're doing a can like this. So if you go into X-ray mode, you'll see you've got a gray background with a gray topped can and a gray mesh. So just take your time. We're gonna grab our reference image and hit S to scale and just bring this guy in. It's not quite centered, so I'm gonna hit G and Y and just bring it up on that Y axis and that is looking good to me. So with our lid top whatever selected, we're gonna tab into edit mode. I'm gonna to go to one for my vertex selection just because I think it's a bit easier to see. So what you can do is we can just hit A, select it all, or you know, Alt click, whatever your heart desires, A to select it all. 
and we're going to start building these sort of ridges here. So same with how we did the can, how when we added that subdivision modifier, it was all bubbly and we needed to add more geometry to make it sharp and like give it those angles. Exact same process for the top. So with here selected, I'm going to hit I to inset and I'm going to look at just this bottom, bottom bit of the can. So just going to make sure I get this nice lined up. So hit I to inset and about there looks good. And then comes the really, really fun, tedious part. We're going to come in here, box select these guys, hit S and X. So we're going to scale it along this X axis and just bring them in here. And I'm just going to follow this curve all the way around here. Um, now, personally, like I, I just like to do it. I like to do it just manual way, just moving them both, just box selecting and S extra scale. You can do this, delete this bit and add a mirror modifier. So only doing one side. Um, but I don't know how time effective that is. Once you have to like set your mirror options, delete it, remerge it. Um, so we're just going to go the tried and true work, work labor. Just put in those hours, get this done. Um, you can pause the video or skip this bit and, you know, sort of do it in your own time. Um, and also, if you are doing this for a client, um, or you want it to look better than this, do take your time with it. I'm sort of just pumping it out for a tutorial. S, X, G, Y. And that little guy, G, Y. Now, you do want to try to keep these whenever you're modeling something um, like evenly spaced. G, Y. And what I mean by that is, I'm going to fix this one. I'm going to edge select. So this edge and this edge should be the same length as that one, as that one, as that one, as that one. You know what I mean? So it's all even. Just when you're applying textures, um, the more even the face, the better result you're going to get, especially if it's something that you're putting an image texture on. So just something to, something to keep track of. Now I've got that first outside bit done. I'm not happy with those ones. And what we can do here is going to alt click. So alt click, grab this whole, whole ring here. And we're just going to same as before, I to inset and bring it in to the second bit of the lip. So the comes down there. Perfect. Um, now onto the mouth bit. Same as before, I to inset. And I'm just following this bottom edge. I'm pointing at the screen that you can see what I'm doing. Just following this bottom edge, edge here. Um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to fix these bits up. Same as how we did that other bit of the can. So just Grabbing them both, scaling them on the X axis, moving them on the Y, bring them up a bit more. Grab these guys, G, Y. Grab these guys, bring them in a bit, somewhere about there. So now what we're going to do here is we sort of want to create, a, you know, the mouth bit here, but you've got all this geometry all the way up here. And if you were to move this down to then like follow this shape is you end up with these really ugly, big, long faces, which we don't want. Um, as I said before, you want it to be nice and as even as you can. So what we're going to do um, is essentially just break this little workload into two sections. So how we're going to do that, I'm going to grab these two guys here, hit J, and that's going to join them both. And we're going to do this the whole, pretty much the whole way up. So J, so now I've got, you know, a nice face in here. Try to make it as even as possible. Bang, bang. Bang. Now, when we get to here, might add one more. Bang. One, two, three. Oh, I'm going to get rid of that one. Because what we're going to do is try to make more quads. So I'm going to move this out. And what we can do here, as you can see, if you were to have this vertex, this guy, and this guy, if there was a vertex now, like here, would have a quad. So we're going to add some. And by doing that, we're going to add some loop cuts. And that means as well, we're also going to be able to complete this bit. So I'll show you what I mean here. So I want to see how many we need. One here. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loop cuts I'm going to need. So just in here, control R and you'll see that yellow bit pop up. And we're going to scroll up on the mouse wheel till we get to seven. Left click, right click. Now, if you're not sure if you got to seven or not, before you press anything else, you can come to this little drop down menu and change the amount right here. But I've got seven, so I'm a genius. Um, and then, so what you got that? Same as before, we're just joining all this stuff up. So just clicking and dragging, slapping J on that keyboard, and happy days. Look at this, we've got quads. It's a good day to be alive. Whoop. And then, as I said, we've now got the extra geometry to go here. So we're just following this curve. So 
Grabbing these, grabbing these. G Y S X, G Y S X, G Y S X. Just repeat, just repeat yourself over and over again. I'm gonna go rogue here and just manually move them. Boop, 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 boop. Too happy with it, something like that. Obviously, take you can take a bit more time with it um, if you want. And then look at this guy, it's looking pretty good. We've got all this nearly done. Just need to do this one little more drop down. So we're gonna Alt and click. Now, first little issue, because we've like sort of split this face, this like circle, top lid, whatever, into two sections, it might not grab it all. So then you can just hold Alt, Shift, and left click, and that'll grab the whole thing. Look at that. I to inset, same thing, following this bottom bit. Now this will need a little bit of work just cause it's not like the other bits have been quite like evenly thicknessed, if that's a word around. Um, so here I'm just gonna go real rogue and just click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. Um, obviously try to do these symmetrical if you can. I am lazy and I don't think the result looks that, that different. So bang, 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 bang. And now you would have maybe just seen a little glitch there, a little shading glitch. That's because we have to do the same as here. We want it to have nice quads. So, you know the drill, click and drag. Don't move your camera, click and drag, J, J. I'm missing everything, J, J, these two, and J, and look at that, quads. All the, all the 3D nerds out there are gonna love us. Like, oh, look at this good guy, teaching people to do quads. Perfect. Now we're done. Look at that, how good does your, your can lid look? No, so what we have to do now is just bring those like beveled bits of the top can down and that's how we'll actually get our can looking shape. Copy break. So to do this, jump back into my top view and with the top bit selected, I'm gonna hit tab to go into edit mode and I'm gonna to come to my face select or hit three. And what we're gonna do, so as you can sort of see like this ring, just alt clicking, is at the top, it then goes down to then like this section and then that's like in here is down again. So instead of having to go through and select all this stuff, what we can do, alt click, grab all this bit and shortcut, we're gonna go control I, that's gonna invert it. And then we need to go sort of one more step in. So what you can do is holding control, you can hit plus and minus and that will um, add and take away from your selection, look at that. So with that bit selected, so two in, I'm gonna to come to here, I'm gonna go G, Z, just bring it down. I'm gonna just hide this guy so I can see I'm doing a bit better. That's pretty good. And then here we wanna grab our mouth bit faces, our mouth, our mouth faces. Grab these, the mouth drinking bit faces, you know what I mean. There we go. Grab that guy and then G and Z and bring that down as well. Might be a bit extreme. Something like that. And voila, it still looks terrible. So we've got to add some more geometry guys, you know this to keep those edges nice and sharp. So tab into edit mode, go into my 3D view. In edit mode, I'm going to press two to go into my edge select. And I'm going to alt click, grab that whole outside bit. And I'm going to alt shift click and grab this bit as well. So we've got both of these edges here. And what we can do is just hit control B and you'll see it'll bevel it out. So just two little bevels, something like that. And then same for the mouth bit. So Alt and click, Alt and shift click. So make sure we get the full loop, Alt shift click, Alt shift click. Oh, we've got little stray guys here. Alt shift click, just make sure you have the full amount selected and then control B and just add some little bevels there as well. And as luck would have it, with that on, that off, Look at that, that's much better. Perfecto, great time as well to always. Don't forget, save your file, control S. Now, the reason I have two top of the can images is personally, I just don't like the shape of this pull tab. It's not, this. it's much squarer on this uh, boss can. So what I'm gonna do, you can either hide or delete that guy. Make sure you're still in your top view. I'm gonna go shift A, image and A background and I'm gonna grab that other one. I just prefer it. Obviously you can make the other one as well. 
You can also really, for the, the main image, this hero image, you don't need the pull tab because it's sort of at this angle, you can't see it. So if you don't want to build the top of the can, you don't have to. Um, and you can just sort of skip, skip through this section if you want to. Um, I want to hide our lid, hide our can. So we're going to build this pull tab just um, separately. So with here, I'm going to go shift A in our top view, add a mesh and add a circle. Um, Cause it's quite small. We don't need this many vertices. 28 has been working well for me. I'm going to press tab. I'm going to go into vertex select with one, just so I can see a bit better. S to scale. And then I'm just going to GY, bring it up here, somewhere out there, S. Somewhere there is looking pretty good. As you can see, this reference image isn't quite centered. So I'm going to go GX, somewhere about there. I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to tab into edit mode. Make sure you have this whole bit selected. So A to select everything. And we're going to hit S to, uh, no, we're not going to hit E. And then we're going to right click. And then we're going to hit S to scale it out. So perfect. So then what we're going to do is sort of same as, same as before. It's really repetitive. Um, is just, we're going to just grab these guys and we're literally just going to follow the shape of this pull tab. Um, so we'll be honest, maybe it might be, it could be definitely quicker to, um, do this with a mirror modifier if you so desire just to save yourself time. Cause you can't like click and drag to gra end up grabbing these guys in the middle. So I'm just clicking and holding shift, like holding shift and grabbing both of them at the same time. SX to bring them out sideways from each other. So SX, GY, SX, GY, scale them in a bit more. SX, GY. So yeah, once again, feel free just to, to, to pause this bit, get it done in your own time and meet me back when you're done. So when we get to here though, we're going to stop. Oh, can we do one more? We might do one more. Grab these guys, SX, GY, somewhere about there. So now that we're at this point, where we sort of are at the center bit, I guess, of this little pull tab. What we want to do is I want to get all this stuff in line so I can then pull it all down. So to do that, what I'm going to do is just click and drag to select all these bottom ones. And then to get them nice and straight with each other, I'm going to hit S. So I'm going to scale it on the Y axis. So hit Y and then zero. And that will bring them all in like so. I'm just going to fix this quickly because they are too close to each other. Something like that. Looking pretty good. Awesome. So grab these edge middle guys of this middle five, grab this to an edge and we're going to line them up with these bits. So you can just go SX somewhere like so. Now jump into your edge select mode or press two, grab this guy, hold shift, grab this guy. I'm going to pull these down and start building this bit. So I'm going to go E, we're going to extrude it out on the Y axis till we get to about there. And then I'm going to come to the bottom. I'm going to go E and Y and somewhere about there. So what we can do now, press one to jump in our vertex select or come up here, box select, grab these guys and hit F to fill. So as you can sort of see, we are nearly got the shape all done. Now for here, I'm going to just move these guys out, get a bit more even. I'm going to follow that same amount of geometry. So it's in the center. So with here, control R to get your loop cut. I'm going to scroll up till we can add three more loop cuts and right click to make sure they're in the center. And now with these guys, we've got something we've got a bit more to work with. We can start to follow this shape right here. So I'm going to grab this guy, this guy, G Y and just S X something about that. These guys can come up G Y. Maybe SX a little bit and GY again. Perfect. And now it's going to add a couple more faces in here. Just once again, to try to keep the typology, typology, topology, nice and clean. I'm going to go with four. We're looking good. Might just grab these guys. SX, GY. Just to follow that shape a little bit better. So now we're here. It looks like trash. Um, we need to make it nice and smooth again. So it makes stuff smooth into our modifiers add a subdivision surface. I'm gonna give it two as well. Now it's looking better, but it's it's flat. It's a fully pl flat plane. We need to give it some bit, bit of thickness. 
So to do this, you could use a solidify modifier, but what I'm going to do is just do it manually. So tabbing into edit mode, I'm going to hit A to select everything. And then I'm just going to go E and Z and just bring it down a little bit, somewhere about there. They're not too thick, somewhere about there. Now, the reason I didn't use the solidify modifier is because I want to add loop cuts in between here. And with the solidify modifier, you'd then have to apply it to then add those loop cuts anyway. So that's why I've gone this method. So what I mean by add these loop cuts in is if I go to this view, can't really see because these references, see what's all like very, I don't know, like ballooned out. We want it to be a lot sharper. So into here, I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to go add some more loop cuts. Control R, I'm going to left click, right click into here, the, this bit, left click, right click and Control R one more time, left click, right click. Now, Jump into edge select. I want this to all be even, like evenly spread out so it gets a sharper edge. So how we're gonna do that is, I'll start with this outside one we just added, that like new loop cut we put in. So Alt click, it's gonna grab that whole thing. Alt and shift and click, grab that one. And then Alt and shift and click and grab that guy as well. So you should have all these new loop cuts that we added selected. And you can go Control B and just build them out a bit. Somewhere about though. Look at that. We're all over it. Jump back into your top view. Because what we want to do is I want to add this little, the little circle dude. Now I'm going to be cheating a little bit and not follow this exactly. Because they sort of have like a little like tab bit that comes out, which a circle goes through. Um, because you're not really going to see it. Um, we're, we're going to cheat. I'm going to be naughty. We're going to cheat here. So to get this circle, I want it to still be attached to the pull tab and still have this subdivision modifier. So we're going to copy some geometry over from this pull tab. So to do that, we've already got a nice perfect circle here. So in edit mode on any, on your edge or vertex, I'm going to edge, I'm going to alt click. So I've got that whole circle jumping into my top mode. And what we can do is we can literally like duplicate that section. So duplicate shift D, D for duplicate. And I'm going to press Y. So I bring it straight down that Y axis. And as you can see, we've stolen it. Um, we're already in edit mode, so I'm going to just S to scale it down. So what I'm going to do is pop mine about there. So it just connects through here. I know it's not following the reference, but it's my can tutorial. Deal with it. Um, so still with this selected, if you do accidentally like let go of it, um, what you can do, because it's connected to the mesh, it's a bit funny, is if you hover over it and you press L, that will select anything that's connected to what you just pressed L over. So L, but it doesn't select that. L to grab that. Perfect. Make sure you have nothing else selected. Just hitting A to make sure I have nothing selected. So then press L over that. So when we're here, I'm just going to jump into my right view, G and Z, and just bring it up a bit, about there. And then I'm going to extrude it down. So E and Z, somewhere about just below that pull tab is where I want it, about there. Now, as you can see, it's just a ring. We need to get, make it a little like button, I guess. Um, so alt click here and F to fill or F for face, however you want to remember it and just hit F when you're in edit mode and ta-da. And then it looks like absolute garbage. So I to inset, give it some more geometry and then add a loop cut about there as well. I'm going to come out of edit mode, right click shade smooth. Um, the shading is a bit funky. You could, if you wanted to, um, press this face and add another inset. Um, but due to how little the detail is, I don't think we need to spend that extra extra GPU on that um, extra vertices, extra um, faces. So just leave it like that. And voila, once you've got that done, I'm going to unhide our can, unhide our lid um, with this. As you see, he's hiding, he's hiding in here. So to select our circle, which while I'm here, I'm going to label pull tab and just hit G and Z. So we're going to bring it directly up on that Z axis. Just so it's above the can. I'm then going to come in here, zoom in nice and tight, get to close to where I want it to be. And then when you're nice and closed in, we can just rotate to it inside the can, inside the can, and then GZ, bring it down. And I'm looking for here, little, that little bit that we just made to stick through. So it looks like it's connected. 
But that, you can see the full pull tab and Bob's your uncle calling a day. Your first bit of modeling is done. So, fantastic. Let's, what we're going to do, um, so, wait, well, whoop. So now that we've got all the elements of the can modeled, what I'm going to do is I just want them to all move together, be parented to one another. Cause currently, you know what I mean? Everything's separate. I don't want that. Um, I might just scale that out a little bit. There we go. What I'm gonna do is click my pull tab, hold shift, click my lid, whatever. And then lastly, click my can. It doesn't really matter what order you do it, but you just want the last thing you click to be the can. So the can will be yellow, everything else is red. So what we're going to do is press control P and it's going to bring our parent options up and we want object keep transform. Now, look at that all together. Bob's your uncle. So next we're going to jump into while we're here, we're going to start working on this water simulation to get that coffee splash effect. Um, I'm going to pop up a quick reference image of this desired effect I was going for. So it's from this like dare iced coffee ad. So it's quite stylized in its effect. It's not very realistic looking, but I really like how this looks. So let's get into making it. So how we're gonna do this is essentially we're gonna have, I'm gonna cheat it. We're gonna have the water at the top. It's then gonna fall down, hit um, this plane and it's gonna shoot out. And that's gonna give us that big splash effect. Um, so you would think we're then going to just rotate this can and drop it onto there. We're not, um, because personally I've got better results using a flat object than I did a round object. Don't know why, but I just did. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go shift A, I'm going to add a cube. We still want our can here for now, because what I'm going to do, jump into front mode, scale it down till it's the same width as a can, or if not slightly, slightly smaller, then the can, so we know that that's roughly gonna be the same size. And I'm gonna go S, Z, and just get that same thing. If it's slightly smaller, that's okay. Somewhere out there, it doesn't have to be exact. Just so we got something good to work with. Um, Cause what we're gonna do now is rotate this guy so it's flat. So we're gonna go R, X, 90, perfecto. And then just hit S and Z and just bring it down somewhere about, somewhere about there. Perfect, and that's what we're gonna use for the coffee or the water to hit, and that's gonna cause a splash. So, now that we're here, with our can, we don't really need him anymore. So I'm just gonna come in, hide him for now, and start working on this. Um, don't forget to save your file, as always. Um, so in here, on our little plank of wood, whatever you want it to be, uh, I'm just gonna add a couple of modifiers here. So we're gonna add a bevel and then a subdiv. Hide that subdiv just so I can see this bevel for now. So for the, I'm just following off what gave, gave me the best results here. So I rounded these corners off a little bit. So I'm at 0.34 and I'm just gonna add like three segments and then chuck this subdivision on. I'm gonna put it up to two. Might even give that four for now. And what I'm gonna do here is apply these. Now why I'm doing this is sometimes when you do a simulation, if you were just to have this big, um, big face sometimes it glitches through and goes through it and we don't we don't want that we don't want that to happen so i'm just going to apply it just so the water has more geometry to interact with perfect so jump to whatever view you want shift a i'm going to add a uv sphere scale it down somewhere about there if you want that top view we can get rid of our reference somewhere about that size and then i'm going to bring this up on the Z axis, so G, Z, and about, I don't know, about there. So that's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, six and something or so clicks um, up, and we're gonna duplicate this. So Shift D, bring it over here, gonna press S to scale, and I'm gonna Shift D that one one more time. So what I'm setting up here is this is going to be our coffee, I guess. It's gonna come down, hit this, and we're gonna be below it, and when the, when the water goes bang, 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 that's where we're going to take, I guess like take the image from, if better sense of words, I'm like capture that from, and that's what we're going to use as the splash. Awesome. So we're almost there. Lastly, we just need to add in our domain. So a domain is essentially a section that you tell Blender like, yo, I want this simulation to happen here. So we're going to add a cube. 
go into x-ray mode and now you do need this quite big um the bigger as well your domains typically the slower everything works but due to this we don't you don't really have an option so deal with it if your computer takes an extra couple minutes it takes an extra couple minutes um so scale it up nice and big you do want enough space because as i said the whole point of this is that we're going to be underneath it so the coffee needs to go bang and you need to have enough space for it to shoot out so that's good make sure you have all your elements inside and now we can start making them into their proper properties so i want to start with my plank of wood here in my modifiers fluid come down here to physics and it's going to be in the fluid type it's an effector it's going to affect the water it's going to collide with the water i'm going to give it a little bit of extra sub steps just to make sure it works well and i'm going to pop this to a 0.4 in the surface thickness this is just sort of if it's at zero, it means it's trying to interact directly with that shape. This is sort of making it fake bigger is how I'm going to describe it. So it's definitely going to hit hit the plank and shoot out. So that's good. Next onto our little water balls. So into our physics fluid. This is going to be our flow. It's going to be liquid. So join it liquid geometry. And put that too. So the difference between these is like your inflow. It would be like a tap. It's constantly putting water in. Outflow is like the bottom of a bathtub, your sink goes down. And geometry is just that ball is gonna be water and then just fall down. So that's the difference between them all. Fluid type, um, flow, liquid, geometry, two, and one more. Really fun stuff here. Flow, liquid, geometry, two. Perfect. Onto our big boy here, once again, fluid, type now this is going to be the domain as i said before so it's going to hold our water tell blender do the simulation here and this is where your settings are really going to play into effect of the result that you get um first of all we're going to go to liquid now disclaimer i don't know all the logistics behind water simulations there's some really great tutorials out there cg geek does an amazing one on manta flow which is the liquid in blender um, and he describes it a lot better. I'm just going to sort of tell you what I did to achieve my effect um, because I'm an idiot and don't know the, the, the properties behind it. But nonetheless, let's rip in. Um, so with this selected, um, we want to change our resolution up to 128. Now, if you do have a slower computer, you can try using 64, but to get that sort of break apart water, I guess I'll say, you want the higher resolution. If not, when it's lower, it typically can sort of look like Play-Doh is how I describe it. Your water simulation looks like like honey and it's all like glooped together. It doesn't break apart nice. So spend the extra time letting your computer render it out and do 128. It's such a short simulation anyway, only about like 40, 50 frames that it shouldn't, it shouldn't take you that long no matter what device you're on here. Um, border collisions, going to get rid of all of these. So what that is, is if the water comes down, hits this, if it were to hit this, this wall here, and your collision was on, it would hit it and fall down and sort of stay in here. And we don't want that just in case the frame that we like, there might be water at the bottom, you then got more stuff to delete. This way it just hits it and disappears. So come down here, other values we wanna change in our liquid, we're gonna change our minimum to 12. That just sort of means more particles per 128. Bits so we're chucking in, we're gonna mesh, chuck a mesh on. Open that up. Up res, if we're doing 128, which we are, we only need one. If you are gonna do 64, make this a two. And then with our particle radius, we're gonna pop this to a 1.3. That's worked best to me. Now this factor is what gave me the biggest difference in results. So if it's at the two, it looks a lot more Play-Doh. And if it was down lower to one, it really hits the that effector plane and like breaks apart. So I got the best results about 1.3, 1.4. Let's let's meet you halfway, let's go 1.35. That's what I got the best results with. Now, speaking of that, with our cache, put that to 50, put this to 50. Um, the reason we're gonna do this in type modular is so you can bake your water sim and then we can bake our mesh. And then if you wanna change this, you can then just redo the mesh. You don't have to rebake the whole thing. So modular is resumable and we're good to go. So we're gonna come up here, bake this, bake the mesh, 
and I will see you once I'm finished baking. Perfect, so my bake is now done, so we can hit play, and you'll see, boom, and it's all working, perfect, just how I want it. So, come here, I'm gonna come to my bottom view, so you can sort of, there we go, get an understanding of what effect we're trying to get here, and then you can just scrub through your timeline until you find a result that you're happy with. So I'm gonna keep going, 35 or 36. I think I might go 36. I quite like how, how broken apart that is. Or maybe 35. Let's go 36. So once you find the frame you're happy with, you can, if you want to, grab all these guys and stuff and duplicate them so you can save your simulation, like, I guess, like settings almost. Um, but if you're happy with it, like I am, and you don't want to change it and you're going to go rogue, um, with your new coffee or water selected, come here to your modifiers. I'm just going to apply them. Um, reason I've done that is now I have got a mesh I can work with. So we can get rid of these guys. Box select our little balls. Delete. Delete your balls. X delete that. And happy days. So as well, if you do have a uh, bit slower computer, a lot of this stuff you're not going to see. So you can get in and start deleting stuff, but... Um, what we're going to do as well to just cut down on the amount of vertices there are is we're going to use a decimate modifier. So what that is, is first of all, actually, I'm going to just set my origin here to geometry. I'm just going to flip this up the right way. So set origin to geometry and I'm just going to go RX180. So it does a full, full flip up on my top view. And as well here, you can decide which side you want the top and bottom to be. I like it like this. I can also tell straight from the get-go that this is a little bit too tall for my liking. Maybe don't change this now, but I'm going to a little bit just go SZ and just bring that down a little bit. That looks a lot better. So the decimate modifier, what I was saying before, with your liquid selected or a coffee, I'm going to label mine coffee. In here, we're working with quite a lot of geometry here. It's quite a high res uh, fluid bake. So in here, find your displace. Um, not your displace, find your um, decimate. Um, and this is essentially the opposite of a subdivision. So it's going to take faces away compared to adding them. So the reason we're doing that is we're at 32,000. That's not that bad, really. Um, if you've done like an up res factor of two with the 128, you'll be double that. Um, but what we can do here is this ratio here, one is 100%, so all the faces, and then zero would be 0%, none of the faces. And you'll see how little difference changes in the mesh by us cutting back heaps of vertices. So I'm going to go 0.5, 50%. And look, nothing, like, can you even notice a difference? That's full. That is half. You can barely notice a difference at all, but yet we've cut 16,000 faces away. So you need to keep scrolling down a little bit lower. So that's probably too far. One, I'm pretty sure I've had with the, the half. You don't want to go too low because you will start to lose the shape too much. It's too hard to bring back later. So I'm going to go 0 0.5 and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to apply that. And then this sounds really counterproductive, but we're going to add now a subdivision surface to it. The reason why is we need to get these, all these clumpy bits gone. And if you were to keep the amount of, if you weren't to do the decimate and then add a subdivision, if you have a great computer, you'll be fine, but mine's not the best. So this will make it more blocky, but allow us to add the subdivision surface to then smooth everything out. So with that, I've right click shaded it smooth. And now definitely save your file. Cause if you do have a slow computer, this might make it cry a little bit. Add a modifier, subdivision surface. Let it think, boom, that wasn't too bad. And look how much better that looks. He said this ugly shading will sort of be hidden, so don't stress too much. Um, you can try two. Personally, I think one almost looks looks better. So I'm going to leave mine at one. Call it, call it a day. You can have two in your render. And boom, look at this. So this is pretty much the modeling all completed. So if I were to show you, for example, how we're going to do this is get this can here. And this will come down. Look at that. You saw you're getting the picture. Don't like so. Perfect. So that's all we're going to work with. Um, I'm just going to get rid of those rotations. And I'm going to hide our um, coffee simulation so far. 
because what we're getting up to next is we're going to get designing this can design. So before we get jumping into designing this in Illustrator, we first need to know what we're working with. So what we're going to do a thing is called UV unwrapping. So what that is, if I show you this can for instance, right, you've got a flat label that's around a cylindrical surface. And as you can see here, there's literally on this can, it's very obvious, a physical seam. So if you were to cut down there, cut this top bit, you, you can sort of get the picture, it'll be then a flat label to work with. So we need to figure out how big this label is gonna be. So to do that, we're gonna jump into edit mode and we're gonna mark those seams off. So I'm just gonna jump to the back of the can and we need that top bit, we need that top seam. So I might hide this, make it a bit easier. On our edge select in edit mode, alt click and grab that guy. That's like gonna be like the top bit of the label. Come down here, alt and shift and click and grab that guy. That's the bottom bit of the label. And then we need that back bit, like the seam. So shift click, just gonna grab, come down carefully, grab these guys. Ba, ba, ba. Bang, 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 bang. And then once you've got all them selected, we're gonna hit um, right click and we can add mark seam and they should go, they should go red. That means you've done it all correctly. Now, if you're like me and you've stupidly just unselected everything, just come back here, alt click, grab them. Cause now we need to unwrap it. We need to pull that label apart. So you unwrap, you can't see anything cause I should have done this beforehand. I'm just gonna split my screen, come here to UV editor and voila, just like that. So that is now a flat 2D workable label, I guess, outline um, of what the shape of the can is. So we need to take this and bring it into Illustrator. So to do that, up here, if you just press UV, we're going to export it and just label it whatever you want. Can UV layer. I want to up the res a little bit. You probably don't have to, but I am. And save that out. Now that will just be exported as a square PNG um, for us to work with. And I will see you in Illustrator to get designing. Sweet. So now you've done the first bit of modeling. Next up is going to be our label design. So. For this one, I'm going to run it a little bit differently. I'm just going to voice over um, some pre-recorded work because um, I did create this for a university assessment. All we have to do is just come up with some new branding packaging for a drink company. I decided to do iced coffee um, as the ones in Australia are quite loud and aggressive in their like packaging, like Dare and Barista Bros. They're very loud and bold. So I want to tone it back a little bit, try something a bit more minimal. I'll pop up my mood board. Here, just so gonna have a quick little squiz at it. So a lot of cold drip companies have a lot cleaner packaging. And then also I found a lot of inspiration from these random Instagram story templates, which is a weird one, but I really like the layout of them. Um, obviously in saying this, if you have a design already made that you wanna use, you're more than welcome to use it. But if not, let's jump in and you can follow along. So starting on a fresh Illustrator file, 30 by 30 centimeter canvas, 300 DPI, nice and high res for when you put it back into Blender, you want a nice crisp image to go when you can. I always chuck in my mood board as a screenshot of it at the bottom, just for inspiration when I'm working. And then also chuck that UV layer that we saved out of Blender in so we know what we're working with. Here on my font wise, I chose Neue Harsh Grotesque. You can get that on Adobe fonts and High Tide, just this random sort of scripty one for the all below. Um, now, if you're wondering why four degrees or below, when I was coming up with the sort of brand name for it, I was trying to like find a fun way to use ice because iced coffee, how do I like incorporate that into maybe a brand name? So in my searching, trying to find good names, I'll search up how cold is a fridge and a fridge is four degrees Celsius or three or like, you know what I mean? So four degrees or below is sort of where that name came from. Sort of lame, but I sort of digged it. And the Celsius symbol, I think this looks quite nice. Super random, no meaning behind it, but whatever. Design doesn't always have to have meaning. Can just be for fun. Um, so for the all below bit, I just um, converted it into a shape and then just put a outline on it. Um, and then I'm gonna stop here. You're probably wondering why we're we going into Blender. So for here, what I've done is I've counted the faces, like the visible faces from that angle. Um, because when you're doing a can, obviously you can't see the entire design at once, right? When it's sitting on a shelf side by side, you really only have about like 30% or 40% of the can to work with. So by jumping into here, I've counted the faces, you know, six, so it'll be 12 in total. So I know that I have 12 faces on this UV to work with. 
So to work with that, I've then just got one of our, my rectangles and I've made that 12 faces across. So I know my design has to fit into that guide. So just slapping this together now. So yeah, I added that stroke to the all below. So it sort of cuts out in the four degrees. Um, save your file. Um, center it all up. So the reason as well I've kept the color rectangle so little and not at the very top is that top bits that sort of dead area before it gets to the top of the can. Um, and I made sure I didn't want any text in there at all. So by limiting myself to begin with, I then don't make the error late of, you know, pushing text too far up that label design. So here, just using more Neuer Haas, just keeping it nice and simple. So just added cold brew and full cream milk. Then it's added our size of our can. So the two, three, seven mil. Here I tried for some like random type. I was going to say like it was brewed for 12 hours. I can't even spell brewed. Decided to cull that. Um, so it jumped down to the mood board. That's why I like having it at the bottom of my files is I just, lots of them are Australian made. So I thought, you know what? I should probably include that on the front of it. So next I'm adding in original iced coffee. I can't spell it. Um, I'm very ADHD and very dyslexic. So it's not, no, no shame in doing a quick Google to make sure you get your spelling right. Chuck that in there. We're still in Neuer Haas this whole time. I just make the iced coffee bit a bit thinner. Reason behind this for like the lighter weight is I want the original to stand out because I was going to make three other flavors like a vanilla and a mocha. So then I can just change that original to the mocha to the vanilla and keep the iced coffee. It just makes it stand out a bit more that, you know, you are buying a different flavor. Here I'm just adding in some lame little lines because I saw them on those Instagram story templates. I don't know, I thought they looked cool. And as well, I didn't like quite liked having the design sort of like aligned left compared to center line like most can designs is. Just like a little bit different. Like, you know, look at this boss can, it's all centered. So that was another reason for those little like sideways pointless little lines here. Here I'm just like getting it all lined up, all centered. Whenever you're an illustrator and you're working with type, lines, shapes, they all don't have their like their edge marks don't all line up together. So sometimes you do need to come and like manually sort of line them up because the text box will align with the edge of the shape and then that's actually not in line. Um, here, I'll include this down below. I just made up all the info of this guy for you to use. Um, I've also just got some like free to use um, Facebook, Instagram icons and stuff, barcodes. So I'll link this in below, probably with all the reference images. So you can download that and you can chuck that on your um, labels. Well, if you want to, you might have your own ones you want to use, but I'll include the ones I made here. Um, so now I'm just slapping this all together, making sure or that label information is the same as the front design. So that's what that little blue now gray box was for. So just taking my time to get this all sized upright. Now I will make a note here. Um, whenever you're doing label design, especially on packaging and you need a barcode is usually it has to be on a clean background, a white background with black barcode or white barcode, black background. Now I think I cheat in this and I just make it white on the brown. I'm probably not allowed to do that like technically, but it's, it's, it's fits for the internet. Who cares? Um, so now I'm just sort of like slapping some more bits together. I noticed that I should probably have my logo on the back of the can. So even if somebody in the shop spins it around, you can have it on both sides. Um, here I just make up a random catchphrase that does not exist. Uh, just brew with nothing but the best. It doesn't really suit the aesthetic of it at all. I don't really know why I added this, but look, a dare fix will fix it. I thought I should have a my own little label. If dare has one, I should have one too. Now just chucking in some of my um the insta, like insta social tag. Um and it's gonna line these all up, change the color, space them out a little bit more. Um, and just sort of pump through all this. Now it takes me a fair while to align all of this stuff upright, so I just skipped that. I just spent time aligning all that stuff on the left. Um, next get your, the background color, make sure you fill that entire UV section and then just move a UV layer out. So that's when we do put it back in the blender. It fits the can, like the UV that we took out. So now I'm adding in some spacer elements. So you're probably going, what are these ugly gray boxes for? Let me explain. So on here on your can, you have your front design, your back design, but obviously being on like a label, it's going to get like folded around the can. So if you have the design in the middle of, of your like artboard, that means then your back stuff would technically have to be like cut down the middle and stuck on each side. Cause it has to get folded around the can. This is like goes back to when we were talking about the seams. So by doing this, like this way, it means that 
that middle section, I guess of my artboard currently, is equivalent to two of the outside bits because the two outside bits will fold around the can equaling to that one center bit. Does that sort of like does that make, does that make sense? So like when you stick it on the can, the spacing between the nutritional information and that front design, it's all even. I hope that makes sense to you. Probably not, but you get what I mean. Um, here now I've just duplicated it because um, I'm going to make my different flavors. So I'm going to use the exact same colors that I used before. Um, I'll make sure I chuck the hex codes, uh, the color codes somewhere in this video so you can follow along with these guys. But just to keep the brand consistent, I tried to use the same colors. I did, however, use a slightly darker brown for the mocha flavor, just because the brown, the previous brown wasn't dark enough before. So slapping these together, pop, 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 pop. Here I just had to ungroup some layers just because I wanted to change, I needed to change this around um, to the vanilla. Now I will be honest, this one was a bit hard to read. I could have played, played around with it a bit more. Um, you will see, however, I do come in soon and I extend the tracking on the, my like corner elements, the cold brew full cream milk bit. I just spread the text out a little bit and you probably can't see on the screen that you're watching this on, but like on mine, the readability of those elements is far better just by expanding them out a little bit, just giving the letters a bit more space to breathe. But nonetheless, just cleaned up my Illustrator file um, and I called it a day. So with this, make sure you export the PNG out as a square. You don't want to just do your label element. It has to be the whole square because later on when we bring that back into Blender, obviously, if you remember, we exported out a square, even though, you know, we just use a label bit, we want to put back in a square so that when we put it on, it lines up perfectly and you don't have to fuss around trying to get the sizing all right. So now we've done that, I will see you back in Blender. Beautiful. So now that we have our wonderful can label design all made and saved out as a image, jump back into Blender and let's get applying this and doing the materials so we can get this job finished. So first things first, back into our Blender scene, I want to come over to the shading tab. Now mine might look a little bit different to yours. I just have one big split screen on the right and then I'll have this on the left. Um, can't see anything at the moment because I'm in rendered view, but I need to add a HDRI. So that's gonna be our main source of lighting. So in your world properties, into the color, grab environment texture, open. Now I'm gonna use this one. It's called Brown's Photo Studio, just from HDRI Haven, but you can use, you can experiment with other ones, but this one worked really well for me. I'll try to link it below. So open him, we're already looking good. Real quick, gonna come to our render properties. Make sure we are using cycles. Um, just because we're going to be using the ambient occlusion node for the coffee. Um, so you need cycles for that. Um, and you do just get a better result. And in our color management, I'm going to come to our filmic and I'm going to make mine high contrast. Perfect. And we're pretty much good to go. I'm going to change that for later. Awesome. So with our can selected, first we're going to just build our can material. So in our materials, we're going to press new. Let's just call this one can. And it's going to be very like really, really simple material here. I'm just going to bring this value down a little bit, just a little bit grayer. It's fully metallic and put the roughness at like a 0.25 or something. Now, realistically, you can pretty much like call this, call this a day if you wanted to. Um, I am going to add a bit more detail to it though. Um, and don't forget for these guys, add your can material as well. So for this real quick, just cause it is very, very flat. I just want a bit more like a brushed, a brushed look on this as a bit more, a bit more texture, texture to it. So to do that real simple in here, we're going to go shift a, and we're going to grab a noise texture like that. Perfect. And then in here, we're going to go shift a, and we're going to grab a color ramp, move them along like that. Next on your noise texture selected, we're going to hit control T. So that's if you have the node wrangler add on, so that's just in your preferences, you can trigger that there just so we can get this guy up here. I'm going to plug here into here color into our roughness. So how this is going to work, um, object into that going to just, um, object is just going to evenly distribute the noise across the object that you have selected to. Um, with this one, when we're doing our roughness, how it works with this black and white data of the color ramp, right? Is black is no roughness and white is fully rough. So if I were to bring this in, see what I mean? Ba -ba -ba. And then same vice versa. So we're going to use this to play with the like shading of this can. So I don't want it to be fully metallic. So I want to just bring that gray up somewhere out there for now. 
And same, I never want it fully rough, so I'm going to bring them just so they're a lot closer together. It is going to be a subtle effect. Um, in our noise texture, control, shift, click on that, just so we can preview that a bit better. Keep that scale. I want to put the detail all the way up, crank her up, and the roughness a little bit up. Not much, let's just say 0.55. Perfect. Now, the big detail is going to come from in here. So on our mapping node, come to the scale, I want to get this Z and just scale it up, scale it up, scale it up. Let's just say 90. Why not? 90 looks pretty good to me. So when we come back to our principal, control shift click, you can sort of see we're getting that brushed metal effect. To be honest, this can even go a fair bit higher. We'll put 150. There we go. That's a bit nicer. Then we can play with these values again. I think the can's a bit flat. So I think it needs to be a bit more metallic, a bit more um, shiny. Crank that down one, and I don't know, a little bit brighter. Somewhere like that. So if you want the exact same values, on my left slider, it's 737373, and the lighter is A6, A6, A6. Perfect, that's our can done, nice and simple. Now, we need to add our label. So with the label bit selected, if you don't have it selected, you just come in here on your edit mode, can alt grab that and use our control plus shortcut. Perfect. So that's all selected in our materials at the top here. We can add another one. So we're going to add a material slot and cause we have this selected, make sure it's selected. We're going to assign it. So this new material is to the faces that we just selected. And as you can see, there we go. So we need to chuck our label on it. So we're going to add a new material here, label and make sure we're not editing the can material. And we're going to go shift A and we're going to search for a image texture. And then same thing as before, control T just to bring these guys up. So you need to be using the UV for this image texture. Plug this guy into the color. And now just find wherever you saved your guy out. So mine's in here. That was the one I built with you guys. And ta-da, it looks like trash. Um, that's because it's not, it's not placed on the object properly. So split your window and open our UV editor. So if it doesn't show up like it hasn't for me, tab, press tab to edit mode and it'll bring it up or you might have to find it in here. So with here, as you can see, remember we flipped it when we worked in Illustrator. So essentially we just have to flip it back per se. So I'm gonna open our little side bit here for now. I'm gonna grab all of this. I'm gonna hit R and 90. And then on our X, 0.5, that will just center it. And then what we can do is you can see we just need to move this up. So G and Y, bring it up. G and Y, bring it up. Just so you get near the top. And that's looking pretty good. Now, look at that. So that was why, remember how we made those little gray sections in here to get the spacing? So now we have a perfectly UV'd out can. So it is a bit annoying. You can't see it perfectly straight in your front view, but you know, that's, we can fix that. Now, me looking at this, after I do a backflip, um, it's not quite to the bottom how I'd like it, like the text is. So what I'm gonna do is just get this sort of as front on as I can for now, something like so. Come over here and I'm just gonna hit S. I wanna make the image on the can bigger. So I'm just gonna S and bring it in a little bit. And now the cold brew and full cream are touching, but the Australian made's a bit too high up still. So G, Y, and just bring it so it looks even to you. So do you spend more time with it? This is good enough for me. That's looking pretty even. And we've got a delicious looking can. Now with this as well, we can just hide this guy. Keep it in case I need it for later. It looks very flat at the moment. Um, so to fix that, to get this nice sort of glossy shine, come here to the clear coat. Crank that up. I'm going to bring the roughness just to a 0.3. And you can already see that's way better. It's a bit too rough for my liking. I'm too shiny for my liking. So I'm going to bring this clear coat roughness up just a smidge, maybe 0.15. And now we've got a shop ready can. Look at that. Chuck that on the shelves. Control S, save our file. Now, one last thing, depending you know, if you use the colors, um, you might want to do this. But if you use different colors, it might not look as bad. But typically in Blender, you can see the colors of this can compared to this. It's a lot more saturated in what we created compared to the can itself. 
So to fix that, so this matches this better, in your shader, I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna add a gamma node, slap that in there, and then watch as the magic happens. Bah, bah, bah. That's way that's way too much, but you can see the example. So as you increase this, we're gonna get that color back. So one four, maybe one point three five meter halfway. That is looking far better, far better to me. That might still be too strong. One point three. There we go, and that's looking lovely. Perfecto. So that is the can element of it done so far. So I'm gonna go back to just our layout tab and just get rid of our UV editor. Because now we're going to work on the coffee element. So for now, just really quick, I am just going to hide all of our can and open up our coffee. Now, I will give you a piece of warning. Do not try to move this or edit this when you're in your shader node. Just because we are working with so many faces, if you do have a slower computer, you can really have a hard time sort of figuring it out. So if you do want to move it or like scale it, just make sure you're in this view here. Perfect, so always save your file just in case it's like this. Come to my top view, back into my shading tab. Scroll out, come to my top view. I'm gonna just kill that UV area so I can just focus on this. So, I'm gonna just come here, I'm gonna press new. It's gonna open a new shading tab. What we're gonna do here for the coffee material, now this is very fake, this is not how proper coffee and milk and stuff will work. Um, as I said, I'm trying to recreate this, this sort of dare, dare ice coffee ad and the coffee in this. So that's what, I, that's what I've done here. Um, let's jump, let's jump into this fake coffee. Um, so first things first, I'm gonna add a ambient occlusion node. Secondly, I'm gonna add a cuddle ramp, grab that guy. And then third, after I move these, I'm just gonna add a mix RGB. So, sort of how I say with the roughness on the cam material, whenever you're using like a mask or any stuff, is it works in black and white data. So hypothetically, you could, if you wanted to, like plug this color into the base color, change this around, and like it, it will work, but it doesn't really give you accurate results. So keep that like that. That's what this is for. And we're gonna use the ambient occlusion node as the factor between our two colors. So how this works, is if I just control shift click on this color ramp with this ambient inclusion, it sort of works with the shadows and the highlights. So if I want to show more shadows, bring that across, more highlights, bring that across. I hope that sort of makes sense to you. So for here, we're gonna come grab our dark color, our shadow color. So something like so for now, and then our coffee color, bring that up, bit more pale. Something like so for now. I will change these in a little bit, but first I'm just gonna come here and to get this fake milky coffee effect, just put this roughness like well down, like a 0.1. You can already see it looks better. And our clear coat cranks that up. So this is very fake. This is not how you should be doing it. Um, I will play around with these values a little bit, but for now you sort of get an understanding how we're getting that real stylized coffee effect. So personally, I think you could use a bit more of these browns in it. Something like so. And I think that this can be a bit more saturated. It is a stylized coffee after all. We're not after realism. Something like that. So we will probably have to change this in a little bit. I've just done this bit for now because once we chuck the can inside, the ambient inclusion node will play off the can. Obviously the can's gonna create shadows and then that's gonna affect our material. So. From here, we're gonna get our can back open so we can view it all. And now it's time to scale and position this guy. So I'm just gonna to come to my left view. No, I'm not, my front view, my left view. I'm gonna go R and 90 and negative 90. So I want the top at the top. Come back up here. I'm gonna scale the can and everything up because we parented the objects that will come with it. Scale that up a little bit. And I'm just gonna rotate it just so it looks a little bit more natural, follows the splash shapes. And I'm gonna check that nothing is clipping. And of course it is. Come up there. That is looking better to me. I'll probably scale that can down now a little bit. And I'm gonna move it up there. And we're looking good. Save your file, because we're gonna jump into our shading editor. Now with this, the label isn't quite right. So on our can, 
we can just rotate him around till we get that label to the front. Bit more, bit more. Perfecto. So here you can already see this big difference and how much more of these dark browns that are showing up here. So I'm gonna lose them a little bit. Something a bit more like so. And once we add a floor in and an extra spotlight, it should fix itself up. If not, we might just come in and just tweak it. Just take your time, just take your time with it. Jump into my layout. I'm gonna add a floor and then we're gonna add our material to that. So shift A, add a plane, S to scale it up quite large, G and Z. Just bring it below that coffee a fair bit. Come back to our top view, back into our shading editor. And we're gonna do this floor. So how I did the floor and got that sort of almost like cow printy abstract shapes at the bottom was by using a bump map. So it's actually playing off the light um, and that's how we got the effect. So for the floor with our new material, you can call it floor, shift A, add yourself a musgrave texture. And we're gonna go control T on that as uh, control shift, control T on that as well to open these up. Um, we'll probably keep it on generated for now. We might be object. Um, shift A, add in a color ramp, but plug the height of this into here. And then we're gonna plug this into the normal, the color to the normal. And it looks like garbage. That's because we're putting color data into normal data and we can't be having that. You've got to put normal into normal. So to do that, we'll convert it by going Shift A, searching up a bump node, chucking that in. It still looks like rubbish. That's because it's gone to the normal. We need this to go to the height. Now we can sort of see what we're working with. These nice sort of shadows coming along here. Obviously you could just keep a flat white background if you like, but I like this little bit of extra, extra detail on it. Um, gonna bring that scale up just a bit more. So I get a bit more of that. I'm gonna lose most of the detail. Just a little bit. I say most and then take barely any of it away. And then the mention is where you can really play with those shadows. So I'm just gonna move it up till I get a result I'm happy with. About 1.67, I'll go 1.7 to make it easy. And we're looking pretty good. So then, you know, you can use your color ramp as well. That will sort of make your, the holes or the cracks, I guess, sort of smaller and bigger. But I'm quite happy with how that's looking so far. It might be a bit too aggressive. So I'm just gonna halve my distance. Maybe not half. So there, 0.75 per our distance on there. And I'm pretty happy with that so far. So to fix our lighting here, I'm just gonna cheat, open this up a little bit, and I'm gonna go Shift A, and we're gonna add in a spotlight, an area light, sorry. So light, area, G, Z, I'm gonna bring it up. S to scale, scale up a fair bit. Smaller it is, the harsher the shadow is, the bigger it is, the softer it's gonna be. So we want this pretty soft lighting. Gonna pull it that just probably just to about, I'm gonna put 300 for now, obviously we can change it later. I'm gonna set my shape to a disc. Now, because of the harsh shadows on this left side, I'm just gonna press G to move her over here. Come to my left and just hit R to rotate it up. I'm gonna scale the light up a little bit more. Back to R and just get it so it's pretty much pointing on the can. And was already looking a lot better. I think it could be a little bit brighter. Let's try 500. There we go. Now it's really making it pop. So the reason I just built that in the shader editor was in case I wanted to just redo this coffee. Cause I might, I might make this chocolate color a little bit more saturated, but then bring it away a little bit more. So I might bring this to about here, but then knock that the whole way back. Yeah, that's nice. That is nice. That can maybe be a little bit more saturated as well. Perfect. So if you want my exact colors, obviously every scene will be different though. My dark brown is 623A14 and my light coffee bit is EFBD8C. Perfecto. Last but not least, come to your layout. Let's add a camera so you can snap a pic of this. Into your, add a camera. And once you add your camera, if you're still in your top view, we can press Control, Alt and zero on the numpad and that will pop it up to our view. Sometimes it's randomly a bit off, which I never really quite know why. So to center that out, I'm gonna change my dimensions just so I get a nice rectangular sort of frames if you put it on a billboard. So I'm going 1920 by 1400. And then I'm not sure if you could really see before compared to being in the camera or not, but being at 
a 50 mil focal length, which is this that is at, it can sort of warp it a little bit too much and it makes the coffee look smaller and the can a bit too bulbous. Um, there's lots of examples online of using different focal lengths in like port, uh, portrait photography. So we're gonna up out all the way to 100 and it should bring the background in closer um, and almost make it feel bigger compared to the can, which it's sort of hard to see, but it gives you like just a, I prefer the look of it. Just makes it a bit more flat, but in a three dimensional sense, I'm talking absolute rubbish. Uh, you get what I mean. Bang, switch that to that and ta-da. We have done pretty much our first little render here. I might actually quickly into here, just for this shadows here, shift A, I'm gonna grab myself a plane, scale it up a fair bit. RX90, not RZ90, just get it horizontal to the can. Is I'm actually gonna use this as a bit of bounce light because our HDRI is coming in from this direction. And you'll see, if I just start to move it, you can already start to see the difference. So if I scale that up a bit more. So you can see now it's filled in this light, but we're not adding any extra harshness, but it's using the available light in the scene. So if I were to move it away, see how dark the side of the can is. Do that and then bring that in much nicer. So set it to somewhere, somewhere you're happy with, unhappy with there. Perfecto. So, I'm gonna give this a little render. I will, however, suggest turning your diffuse and glossy up a little bit, even your transparent, even though not really transparency, but definitely with your glossy, um, just cause we have so many like clear coats going on. You want those extra light bounces and it plays well with that ambient occlusion. Um, perfecto. So, bang, this was our final result after the render, a little bit of color grading in Lightroom. Um, and I really hope you guys enjoyed my first ever tutorial I've made on this fun iced coffee brand identity and like mock-up of it. Um, I might possibly, if you enjoy this, show how I made these other images. So the one with the label coming across it um, and just the mock-ups as well and with the different flavors. Um, so that's for a future video, but thank you for watching. Um, I've been Lachlan Sav and happy designing. Cheers.